All right, guys, welcome back to the channel. Welcome. If you're new, we are talking about the new PlayStation 5 model that Sony just announced. We're talking about the good, the bad, and the ugly. I think there's quite a bit to unpack here because there is more to this console than just a new look and new form factor. And so yesterday, Sony gave us all the details over on the PlayStation blog. And the first thing they talk about is how the storage has been updated to one terabyte, which is nice, but not really that significant of an increase. You'll probably have around 825 uh, gigabytes in terms of usable storage. But after that, they talk about how the PS5 has been reduced in volume by more than 30%. The weight has been reduced by 18%, and it's overall just 24% smaller and lighter compared to the previous models and something I did notice is that a lot of people were seemingly frustrated that Sony didn't put up any comparison images they did release like a 20 second trailer which I'll probably have playing in the background and if you go on their video and you look at the comments that's literally all anybody is saying is it would be nice to see a comparison and you can kind of understand why people are saying that because just looking at it it really doesn't look that much different from the current model PS5, it's kind of hard to tell how significant of a you know reduction in size it, it actually is if you're not seeing it right next to the current model. But when we go down here, we get into some of the more interesting stuff. Now, the first thing we're going to highlight is what I think is something that is good, and that is the fact that there is a detachable disk drive. Now, the reason why I'm saying this is good is because I really did not expect Sony to announce the new PS5 model this way and market it this way. And what I mean is I anticipated that when they were ready to announce this model, they were just going to show a single PS5 model and it was going to be the digital model and they were going to market it that way, right? So that way, when most people go into the store and buy a PS5, they're just going to buy this digital version and they would actually have to maybe go out of their way to discover that you would need to buy a, a separate disk drive for the console if that's something you care about. But instead, what we see here is Sony taking the opposite approach and actually handling it pretty much the exact same way they handled the current models of the PS5, where there are two separate SKUs and they are marketing them side by side. To me, this is a big deal because I really did think that if there was ever a time where Sony was going to lean much more heavily into the direction of embracing a digital only future and trying to get further away from uh, disc based gaming and physical media, it would have been with this PS5 refresh. I think they could have gotten away with it, uh, but I'm very happy to see that this is how they're choosing to handle it. It is also, I think, an upgrade even though it's going to be more expensive now, and we'll talk about that in a moment, it is an upgrade if somebody does decide to buy a digital-only console. If they end up regretting that, you now have the option to buy that disk drive separately and maybe undo that mistake without having to buy a whole nother console. So, you know, generally speaking, the whole detachable disk drive thing, I actually think it's a good thing. It, it's something that i care about i care about collecting game discs and physical media and you know there's all this talk especially now these days about a digital only future and you know seeing sony come out and um you know still kind of market the disc model ps5 right alongside the digital uh, gives me more confidence but now we have to talk about some of the not so good here. And one of the things that people noticed is that Sony decided to actually increase the price of the digital PS5 model by $50 in the US. So this marks the first price increase. For those who aren't aware, the digital model right now is actually $400, or at least it was $400. Granted, it was harder to find this PS5 model. Most of the PS5 models you would see sitting on store shelves uh, would be the disc-based model. So there's a $50 price increase there, and obviously people are not happy about that. I will say, I kind of almost view it as a good thing, as crazy as that might sound, because in my opinion, it just makes it 
you know, much easier for the consumer to go towards what I think is the better option by far, which is the disc based model, right? Uh, the $50 difference, I mean, that's not even the price of a full game just by the model with the HD Blu-ray disc drive. You know, even if you're somebody who buys most of your games digitally, just having that option there, if you ever do come across uh, a really cheap game uh, physically and you want to buy it, you'll, you know, you'll be able to do that. Whereas if you lock yourself in to the digital, you won't. But again, you won't necessarily be locking yourself in. You can just buy the disc drive separately and that points us in the direction of how much this is going to cost if you do want to buy the disc drive separately it's going to cost 80 us dollars um that is cheaper than what i expected i thought it was going to be 100 but the reason why i thought it was going to be 100 is because i thought the digital edition was going to remain 400 dollars so buying a digital model ps5 and then buying the disc drive separately would not be an ideal move Certainly not, because it's ultimately going to be more expensive than just buying the $500 model. But yeah, you know, talking about all the pricing here, nothing too crazy. Obviously, again, the $50 increase, not great. But where things get kind of crazy, in my opinion, is this new stand that Sony is selling for $30. They say here on the PlayStation blog, a horizontal stand will be included with the new PS5 model. Also, a new vertical stand compatible with all PS5 models will be sold separately for 30 US dollars. Now, they actually do provide a picture of the stand that is provided with the PS5 so you can stand it up horizontally. And it looks kind of silly. Honestly, I genuinely feel as though with this situation regarding the stand and how you're going to place your PS5, this is a major step back. The way the PS5 is right now, it comes with a relatively decent stand that allows you to place it vertically or horizontally, and it doesn't look that bad either. Looking at this, you know, the one that ships with this new PS5 model, it looks like a little kickstand. It's, it's kind of silly, in my opinion. I mean, yeah, if it gets the job done, that's what matters. But this idea that you now have to buy a separate stand for $30 just to place the console vertically, again, it's just a major step back. I can't help but look at it as kind of ridiculous considering that if you buy a PS5 right now, you can stand it vertically and you don't have to pay anything extra. I'm, I'm really not sure what Sony was thinking here, but it's not a good look. A lot of people are pointing this out. A lot of people are unhappy about this. And it is quite unfortunate. But uh, when we continue to talk about this console, it is worth noting, and I completely missed this. I was talking about this in my stream yesterday, and I kept mentioning how we need to know, you know, what the situation is with the colored covers and what's going on there. And I completely missed this paragraph where they say a variety of PS5 console cover colors for the new model will be available starting in early 2024, including an all matte black colorway and the Deep Earth Collection colors that were recently announced. And they also make it known that additional colors will be released in the future. So yeah, I'm, I'm not sure how I missed that yesterday, but pretty significant for I think a lot of people who are, you know, wanting to customize their console there. But yeah, generally speaking, I'm not a big fan of what Sony's doing here. Everything about this, frankly, just seems like a step back. And maybe to some people that's a little bit harsh, maybe to others that's not harsh enough. But starting with just the look of the console, I think it actually looks worse. I don't think it's that bad, to be clear. It doesn't look that much different. But, you know, seeing the kind of strip in the middle of it, it just looks not as good right i think the original model ps5 just simply looks better yeah it might be a little bit bigger but i'm just not really liking what they decided to go with here but really it's when you consider the fact that you now have to buy a stand separately for 30 bucks if you want to place it vertically the stand it comes with looks way way cheaper than what we are getting right now um, and then the price increase of the di digital model, I, I'd say in general, like there's just really not anything great 
or even good about this. But Sony does make it clear that once they sell through their current PS5 stock, this is going to be uh, the model, these two models here that are going to replace the current models. And so, yeah, uh, that's the situation with the new PlayStation 5. I mean, yeah, it's nice that you're getting a little bit more storage, but realistically, I, I don't know that this is going to be enough to kind of offset some of the frustrations that some people are feeling right now with some of the decisions Sony made here. And at this point, I also want to say this. This is uh, two for three when it comes to Insider Gaming and Tom Henderson's reporting. A lot of people were curious to know if his sources were going to end up uh, being accurate because he reported on this, I think, back in September of 2022, saying that Sony is preparing to release a, um, a PS5 model with a detachable disk drive. And at the time, it kind of sounded a little unbelievable, like, what? Uh, but here we are. He was correct. And so he did also say that Sony is making a PS5 Pro and they're giving dev kits out. And uh, yeah, so I think it's safe to say we will be hearing more about the PS5 Pro next year. But at this point, I want to kind of hand it off to you guys. Let me know what you think about the new PS5 model. I'll definitely be curious to see what you have to say. And let me know if you're going to be picking up one. Let me know if you like it better than the current model or if you're going to just be sticking with your current model PS5. Be sure to leave the video a like if you enjoyed it. Subscribe to the channel if you're new. Hit the bell notification icon and feel free to share this video out on top of all that. But until next time, guys, take care.